that. At the same time, I mean, what are your beliefs? What do you believe in fundamentally? Um, I'm agnostic. Okay. Yeah. So what we say, I've arrived at a certain disposition that um, the universe is evidence of the creator. Mm. This is a fundamental point that Muslims just like to cut to the chase by stating, mm. did, did the universe create itself? Did it come from nothing? Or did something create it? Yeah. So science is prevailing at the moment, the, the notion that it was created. Hence, there must have been a creator to that, you see. So that's a fundamental point. But in terms of the egalitarian nature of it, and the, also the, the, what you've proposed in terms of the Adam and Eve, sorry, Eve and Mary and so forth, Islam holds women in, in high esteem, common to the uh, you know, notion that it's a religion which somehow um, oppresses women, which is absolutely nonsensical. Yeah. Certainly, certain cultural aspects in Muslim relationships, they do override the religious edicts. So, for example, you'd be shocked to know that if you, if you were ever to become a Muslim and you married a Muslim man and you both live together, obviously, and you're, you've got a house together, all the responsibilities of that house lie, lie with the man. To the extent that if you earn a living as well, you don't have to support the male in any way, shape or form. Everything you earn, you keep. It, so it's really, you know, it needs to be really highlighted. You say you, like, you've done some Islamic um, 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 studying. Mm -hmm. So what particularly did you like, you know? Um, um, I studied medieval Quranic commentaries. Okay, yeah. interesting. In relation to which topics? Um, in relation to the creation story and gender. And then I studied um, a little bit of art, like Islamic art history. Good. So, calligraphy and all that. What about, uh, so what did you derive from the gender? What is it, you mentioned that specifically, what is it about the gender that's made you feel, you know, that it's, it's resonated with you? I don't, that's interesting. What's resonated with me most about is and gender. I think, like, I studied it from a very academic perspective. Yes. And so I was studying a lot of the interaction between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And so I guess what has resonated most is that a lot of the um, actual scriptural evidence for gender equality is there. It's just interpretation that models it. Excellent. Very good. Yeah, yeah I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, there are certain gender roles in which um, one is ordained and which has been prevalent throughout history in all societies, you see. But somehow we seem to be living in a society now which is somewhat to become somewhat topsy-turvy, shall we say. Yeah. So those gender equalities are there. I mean, if, you'd be amazed to know in Islam, you'd be amazed that the female, even though she, she um, just say she stays at home and looks after the children, she's not actually obliged to do that. No. It's all the responsibility of the father to maintain even the children. To so the fact she doesn't have to, um, you know, lift her, pick herself up to even wash the dishes or provide yeah. anyone with food, food at all. So once you in that, you're, you're aware of that, obviously, being a person of yeah. acad academia. So, but hence, I mean, it's also a religion of practicality. So in addition to gender equality and so forth, it's more so a recognition of a divine creator. Yeah. And that, as you're an agnostic at the moment, what we usually discuss with people who may be of that particular disposition is to understand creation itself. So we commonly make reference to the universe. Did the universe create itself? Did it come from nothing? Or as I mentioned, did something initiate yeah. it? So I think yeah. at the moment, science is tending towards the latter point yeah. in that the universe was created in some capacity. And hence, it would have required something to create it beyond the universe. So, and it must be necessary. It cannot be contingent upon something. And it must be independent. And it cannot be parts because the universe is made up of parts. Mm -hmm. so, the, so in itself, the creator must be something beyond the universe. Mm -hmm. Because what we do know yeah. is that the universe came into existence. Right. From a metaphysical state, right. we cannot comprehend. Right. So as me and you speak now, if I put my hand out like that, what have we got in between us? We've got space, time, matter, energy, all components of the Big Bang. But what was that metaphysical state prior to that? is what we would deem that where our knowledge essentially yeah. ends. <laughs> that's so pretty fair. That's pretty fair. But what we can though say for certain, some supernatural event has occurred. Now, why has it occurred? If the universe is from nothing, nothing by definition means the absence of everything and anything. 
did the universe create itself? Which is akin to saying that a mother has given birth to herself. Absolutely no sense whatsoever. So we can only left with one singular understanding that the universe came into existence by a singular action which resulted. That would have then necessitated that it requires some sort of conscious mind because it cannot be a robotic machine because that then in itself would require some form of will behind the creation. So for example, a common analogy I like to use is of a mobile phone. 60 years ago, these were not in circulation. If I was to hand it over to you and I was to say to you, you can speak to one end of the world, to the, from one end of the world to the other, by using this device, you probably, first of all, you think I'm crazy. If I hand it over to you and I show it to you, and then I say, operate it. The first thing you'd ask with the operation is a guide. So what we would then say is that you read the information imparted and you operate the machine. So then God sends revelation to, to humanity. How, this is how I want you to lead your lives. And that, that is the way that we form coherent, structured societies through history. And that is the prevailing message of the religion. So again, just to recap that very briefly, the, the, the plausibility that, or the possibility of there being a creator far outweighs that there's no creator due to those points that I've, I've, I've made mention to you. So this is something perhaps um, that you would like to consider. And um, you know, Islam is a very fast growing religion amongst the indigenous people yeah. of, of this country as well. And it's interesting why this is, I mean, it's a phenomenon. And we don't see people becoming like maybe with due respect, Hare Krishnas, or, although you do, you do see a few, or Hindus, or, or what, which other religion? I'm sure you people do convert to other faiths. However, Islam seems to be on the rise. And we do this work quite commonly, and lots of people becoming Muslims. And um, yeah, so basically, this is what we invite people to. And recognizing your creator, one day we're going to perish. 100 years ago, we weren't here, neither myself nor yourself. And it's very unlikely we will be here in another 100 years' time unless we're rather fortunate. So with that regard, this is what we invite people to reflect. We're only here for a limited purpose, uh, or, or yeah, limited period of time and limited purpose. And then we have to be accountable for our actions. And we're all going to grow old and we're going to die. And we are going to be accountable for our actions by to God. Those who dismiss this, I think they're dismissing themselves in, in essence, because the fact that we're even here existing, having life in itself necessitates that we can therefore be brought back again, you see. These yeah. are all points to consider. Yeah, no, they're very good points. I'll definitely ponder them. Thank you. You say you've yeah. got the Quran, haven't you? Yeah, yeah so. I have. Okay, okay. do enjoy well. reading it. Great yeah. speaking to you. Thank you for your time. Take yeah. care. Bye-bye. Alhamdulillah. So enjoy that conversation with this um, uh, agnostic lady who um, uh, perhaps has done some academic reading on Islam, particularly in relation to gender-related issues. So she finds that Islam to be... Um, quite compatible with perhaps things such as women's rights, which we know are very much highlighted within the Islamic faith, those who know of that. So inshallah, may Allah guide her and uh, we'll continue to speak further. Assalamu alaikum.